This gives you a little bit of perspective on the jumps from numbers. And uh, there's kind of a cutesy way of doing this that I'll explain in a second. But ultimately, I mean, you know, we've looked at scientific notation now. So if you see that, you know, on the screen here where I ask you just how much is it, and then underneath that, that's a trillion written out numerical form. And you can kind of see where, you know, I mean, I get you got your, your, your sets of zeros where you could count one, two, three, four sets of zeros times three is 12. Or if you look below where um, you've got the 1.0 times 10 to the 12th, that would be the scientific notation version of a trillion. So we're getting into a pretty big number. And uh, often, um, you know, we talk about millions and billions and trillions where they just get kind of meshed together. And I want you to understand that as you start to add another set of zeros, um, that makes a big difference, especially when you start making the jump from like, say, nine zeros or three sets of three to 12 zeros or four sets of three. And as you continue to move on further, um, each extra set isn't just like one extra set. It actually carries an awful lot of change. And uh, as we start to look at um, distances, not just within our solar system, but, you know, getting to the next closest star, far off galaxies. I think it's kind of important to just understand how large some of these distances are. And I want you to always keep in mind that um, we're human. And, you know, as of now, eh, ballpark, right? You got 100 years on you. And you start to get to a point to where you're saying, well, you'd have to travel for billions of years or millions of years. And then you stop and sort of think, well... It's a good chance I won't see my millionth birthday. So even traveling as fast as we possibly could, the speed of light, which isn't probably something we could actually reach, which we'll see at the end here. Um, you know, it, it gets to be a thing. So, anyways, let's uh, let's let's dive in a little bit closer and look at the differences between these numbers. And what better way to look at numbers than to associate them with dollars? So uh, rather than looking at just miles, because we start to get to um, big jumps here where thinking about miles that we're familiar with um, isn't going to work. But uh, we do talk about dollars in the world in which we live. And uh, some people, you know, uh, chase the dollars a little bit more than they probably should. But, um, you know, as, as I speak right now, you know, there was a, a stimulus package that was rolling up on $3 trillion that was just passed. Um, every now and again, we'll hear about how, um, you know, X amount of billions of dollars are going to whatever chunk for that stimulus package. Um, if you're into sports, you might hear about, you know, major league contracts that were worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So, you know, you start to make that jump from, say, like, uh, you know, millions to hundreds of millions to billions to trillions. Um, you know, they all kind of rhyme a little bit with the uh, aliens on there. And, uh, you know, we need to understand that there's a huge difference between them. So we're not going to just jump straight to a trillion and look at it. We're going to kind of baby step and uh, take our way through from uh, something that's a little bit more manageable. My good pal Ben. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Benjamin Franklin, but you should look into his history. He's a pretty interesting fellow. And uh, he also resides on the $100 bill. So just we're going to start off as kind of like looking at money. But I think it's also important to kind of think about the size of money. Um, you know, if you have me for forensics, you might see that there's like a dollar bill in a lot of pictures at crime scenes. Uh, the reason being is it gives you scale. Most everyone's kind of familiar with how large a dollar bill is or, you know, U.S. currency. And if you see that next to something in a picture, it just sort of scales it in your mind. Like if I've got a picture of just a dollar bill or in this case, we'll say a hundred dollar bill on the ground. Um, I know, you know, about how much space that picture is occupying because of that scale. So we'll just start with a hundred dollar bill, right? Um, most everybody's uh, familiar with that. It certainly wouldn't be something that would be difficult to lug around. You could easily fold it several times, place it in your pocket. Be careful, don't lose it. I'd suggest you invest it, but that's conversations for another day. So we've got our hundred dollar bill. Think, if I were to say, look, I'm going to give you $10,000 in $100 bills. About how much space do you think that that would occupy? So $10,000. Think about, you know, I mean, 100, 200, 300. I'm counting out the Benjamins and uh, we get to $10,000. Would that be something that you could easily carry? 
Uh, do you need a backpack to load it up? Do you got to get a pickup truck? Well, turns out $10,000 would occupy, ba-boom, uh, about a half inch. So, you know, you know about the size of U.S. currency, uh, the length and the width. If we were to stack on top of each other $100 bills until we reach $10,000, you'd be about a half inch thick. So uh, take a look at your thumb. Look at the tip of your thumb or the uh, distal end for those of you in forensic science. And as you make your way towards the proximal end, also forensic science, or I guess anatomy and physiology. In other words, look at your thumb. You got the tip of your thumb, kind of make your way down to your knuckle. About half that distance is going to be uh, about where $10,000 stacked tall of $100 bills would occupy. So let's take a jump here, right? From thousands to a million. This may come as a surprise. Um, here for scale, like I was saying, you know, you could use a currency or a hundred dollar bill for scale in a picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we're going to use a person for scale. And uh, this individual here, it's just supposed to be an average human. So you get kind of an idea for scale. Notice the stack of money on the ground. That would be a million dollars in one hundred dollar bills. So uh, some Hollywood films where they've got the briefcase stuffed with hundred dollar bills and they pop it open and it's usually like an aluminum briefcase, a nice one nonetheless, and they spin it around. There's a real good chance that they're kind of exaggerating the amount of money or under exaggerating the amount of money that's in there for dramatic effect. Um, you could easily stuff a million dollars in hundred dollar bills in a paper bag, grocery paper bag, and probably even comfortably carry it underneath your arm. So uh, does that mean that a million dollars isn't much? Goodness gracious, no, right? I mean, that's game-changing money. I mean, 100 bucks, oof, you can blow that you know, pretty darn easily. At CVS, you could easily burn through that. And 10,000 bucks, nah, you got yourself probably a pretty nice weekend or hopefully a family vacation. A million bucks, oof, you know, you're talking about uh, you know, properly used, changing the, the course of the remainder of your life. So we've got a million dollars. Let's take the next jump up and uh, we're going to stuff in a couple more zeros. But first, let's stop and think about just this million. If I were to say, all right, you've done good. I'm going to pay you a million bucks for your efforts this trimester and I'm going to pay you in dollar bills and let's make sure that I don't short you. So here we go. One, two, three, Four, and so on and so forth until we reached a million. How long would you have to sit there and listen to me drone on and count numbers? Take a guess. Did you guess 12 full days, 24 7, counting at $1 per second? If you did, you guessed right. So, I mean, you know, stop and think about that 24 7, non stop, for 12 full days. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Roughly at that rate, that's what it's going to take to reach one million. Cash, we we're talking about a trillion. How long would that take? I did real good. You should pay me a trillion bucks, not this measly million bucks. Well, at the rate of one per second, oof, we're trying to get to a trillion. Uh, we would be listening to that count for almost thirty-two thousand years. So, if I were to say, there's a catch. I'm going to give you a trillion dollars, but you cannot leave until I reach a trillion dollars. Counting it off at one per second, one dollar bill per second, and you got to stick around till we're done. Uh, is that a, a, a fool's proposition? Indeed. Uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you're probably not going to reach your 32,000th birthday. Perhaps you will, though. All right, moving on here, right? Ba-boom. Check that out. We stuffed in a couple more zeros. This would be $100 million. So, I mean, you know, common sense, right? I mean, $100 million is obviously 100 times more than a million. But I think it's kind of surprising how much more space that 100 times actually occupies. So we went from something that would fit in a brown paper bag, the million bucks, you know, you could probably stuff it under your arm and walk off discreetly, to $100 million in $100 bills. Down here on the bottom, that's supposed to be a wooden pallet. Ballpark like four foot by four foot. They're wooden, you know, for forklifts to lift up. I'm guessing you've probably seen them. Some of the artsy fartsy types now they're using them to make all kinds of furniture and decorate. Not important. Pallets a wooden structure there. That's roughly a cube of $100 bills, kind of about approximately four foot by four foot by three, four feet tall. 
So this is not something that you could just carry. I mean, you would need help loading it up into the bed of a pickup truck or a vehicle, right, to uh, actually drive off with $100 million in $100 bills. So you can see that just that jump from a million to a hundred million, if we're using this scale or, you know, then you equate that to miles, major difference. Oof, look at that. Hundred million, billion. How many pallets do we have here? Uh, if you count carefully, you'll see 10. So if you had a billion dollars, you could give 10 of your besties $100 million. So you can see here that this is now talking about like a, a semi-trailer, right? That you could load up with your $100 bills. So the jump from a million to a billion, remember our million dollars was you can carry it around underneath your arm. Cash, million, billion, M, Bs, what's the difference? That, you're not carrying that around under your arm and it's not fitting in a grocery bag. So yes, that chunk of extra zeros that you added makes a huge difference in uh, how much we're talking about. So we've got our billion, right? Shall we move on? Stop. Think about, you know, what our next chunk would be. But first, before we get to the trillion dollars, just remember here, you know, your billion's got nine zeros, so we're jumping to 12 zeros. Or, to use a little scientific notation, which we should understand now, 1.0 times 10 to the ninth, that's your billion, but we want to see what the heck is 1 trillion, that 1.0 times 10 to the 12th, where we've got 12 zeros. So, uh, you know, here is a billion. We're going to jump from a trillion. So what do you think it's going to be? You know, I mean, would it fill up a classroom? Is it going to be the size of a, a school bus? Is it going to be, you know, the size of a football field? What do you suspect? So without further ado, I give you one trillion dollars. Here's our dude for scale. <laughs> That's my man. Oh, look at this. I don't even want to count out how many extra stacks those are. Notice that they're double stacked. Visually, the jump from a billion, which is an insane number, especially, you know, if you're talking about money. Not so much with distance, though, but if we're talking about money to a trillion, whew, goodness gracious. This just, in my opinion, visually illustrates what the difference is as you jump from a million. Okay, I could stick this in a brown paper bag, carry it under my arm, to a billion. Ooh, I got to call up a buddy and figure out who's got a semi truck and a trailer and a forklift to load it. To a trillion. Where do you even house this? I mean, geez, oh, Pete's, look at how large that area is. It's a huge difference as you start to add zeros and you need to respect that change as you start to just add one or two or three numbers on the old exponent there when you're working with the scientific notation. Fun facts. If you were to take your trillion dollars and uh, you wanted to stack those on top of each other, remember we said, you know, 30 some thousand years to count to that, but you've got it and you've got them stacked. A stack of $100 bills at a trillion. So we took that big, huge pile there and now we're stacking it on top of each other. That would be almost 70,000 miles from the Earth's surface off. I know that looks like it goes to the moon. It does not. Uh, the distance from the Earth to the moon, approximately, it changes depending on where it adds in its orbit. And we'll look at that later. But it's about, about 250,000 miles. So it puts you about a quarter of the way to the moon that you could just scurry up your stack of trillion dollars there and uh, sit on top of your big bucks. If uh, we were to take the trillion dollars and rather stack it on top of each other, but tape it end to end, you would actually surpass the average distance to the sun. Uh, the sun's about 96 million miles from the Earth. Um, we'll see that that changes a little bit too. Uh, hate to spoil the big surprise, but we're actually closer to the sun in the winter time than we are in the summer. Cash, that doesn't make sense. It's cold in the winter. That's true, but we'll uh, get into that a bit later and explain why that phenomenon occurs as well. Um, so your trillion bucks taped end to end not only would require an insane amount of scotch tape to make that feat occur, you'd pass through the sun. So, uh, you know, big, big distances here, right? Well, it's all relative. Big distance. What, the Earth to the sun? Hey, look where Jupiter Saturn is. That's going to be a heck of a lot farther. We'll see. You can always kind of have something that one-ups a little bit of what the awe of largeness is. So if we were to go on a spending spree, right? Let's get back to bucks. 
And uh, we're not going to go by you know, the, the $1 trick anymore. You know, Cash, you said you'd give me a trillion dollars, but you're, you're going to count it out and it's going to take too long. We're going to go on a spending spree and I want 20s. I'm not dealing with your singles. I can't stack this stuff from here to the moon. Um, okay, so if I were to pay off in $20 bills, and now I'm going $20 bills, one 1000 two 1000 or 20 40 60 depending on how you're looking at it. How long would it take for you to burn through a trillion bucks spending it $20 per second? If you guessed over 158,000 years or calculated it out, uh, kudos, you are correct. Yeah, you're about 15 over 1500 centuries. Uh, that's, you know, a staggering amount, right? Obviously, again, we're probably not going to live to see our 158,000th birthday. So, if you wanted to burn through a trillion dollars in college or in high school, right? You start your freshman year and you're going to burn through a trillion dollars. It would take you spending almost $8,000 per second every single second of every single day for the four years that you were here at Crestwood. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit more perspective on the jump from a million or a billion or a trillion and they're rhymy and they must be similar. Yeah, I mean they are, but every chunk of zeros that we add, it uh, makes a huge difference. And uh, as you continue, it gets substantially larger. Here is a brief word on the speed of light and a little bit about light years. Um, just as a fun reminder here, I'd like you to watch the video, but a light year measures distance, not time. I get, you know, if I ask you how old you are and you tell me how many years you've been on Earth, that's talking about how old in time you are. A light year is how far does light travel for a year? And it travels 186,000 miles per second. So one 1,000. Light just traveled 186,000 miles. It's going to take, you know, what, less than two seconds for light to reach the surface of the moon. Uh, you might remember I said that uh, the sun, it's ballpark, you know, approximately um, 96 million miles from the earth for a ray of sunshine or a photon of light to go from the sun's surface to the earth's surface. It takes about eight seconds. So, you know, I mean, can we get that far? No, the farthest humans have been is to the surface of the moon. But uh, we'll circle back around to all that. Here's uh, some good info and a foundation for not only the speed of light, but uh, light years as well. Light travels so fast that it was once thought that it was instantaneous. But in 1673, the speed of light was first successfully measured after many observations of the orbiting moon of Jupiter. Light, it was found, took time to travel across space. In the early 1900s, while working on different aspects the of the young theory looking of relativity, Einstein, I like crazy Albert Einstein, Einstein with big goofy hair and a pipe. that the speed of light was one of the fundamentals of the universe. Einstein said that matter and energy could not travel faster than the speed of light, because as matter accelerates, its mass increases, and more energy is required to accelerate it further. Just real quickly, stop and think about that. That's insane. He calculated out that as you get closer to the speed of light, your mass increases, so you get to a point where it's impossible for you to travel the speed of light. So just remember, because there's times where I say, like, well, if we travel the speed of light, it would take... Technically, that's impossible. So there's going to have to be some crazy changes in technology and how we can navigate the universe to get to some of these far off places, especially if you're going to try to do it yourself within the constraints of a human lifetime. Uh, I, I digress. Continue video. As it approaches the speed of light, the energy requirements become infinite. This makes it impossible for any mass to travel faster than light. After research over many years, it has been determined that the speed of light through the vacuum of space is 299,792.458 kilometers per second. Kilometers? What the heck? 186,282.4 miles per second. If you could travel at the speed of light, you could go from London, England to Los Angeles, California in less than 1 20th of a second. 
Imagine how far light travels in the vacuum of space in one year. This is called a light year and is now used as the world standard for measuring distance because it never varies. Astronomers use the measurement of the light year to calculate the vast distances between objects in space. Our solar system is in the Milky Way galaxy, which is made up of about 100 billion stars. This disc-shaped galaxy is about 100,000 light years across, and we live about 27,000 light years from the center. Astronomers believe there are billions of galaxies, some as far away as 10 billion light years. When we look at the night sky, we are seeing ancient light that has taken so long to reach us, the stars that produced it may no longer exist. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, hopefully that just kind of wraps your head around distances and that, you know, if we're going to get from here to there traveling at this speed of light that we can't even get to it would take billions of years and i know how much a billion is compared to a million and i know i'm probably not even gonna see a hundred years old Oof, stuff gets crazy but uh we still got to start to uh you know digest it further because uh that's one of the neat things about astronomy in my opinion so uh hopefully that gave you again a little bit better perspective if you uh wind up with questions concerns comments uh please see me let me know uh till we meet again be safe